Hello guys, so welcome uh, now uh, to the second uh, video of lecture five. So we're gonna start now solving examples, okay? And we're gonna learn how to deal with such a new creature, you know, this diode in our circuit. So here is our first example, you know, the most, you know, uh, simple example that you will see in that course. You have a one diode here, a resistor of one kilo ohm and a source called the BX, okay? So basically here, uh, it's required to calculate uh, ID or IX, which is ID, because basically, you know, uh, IX is flowing here in both the resistor and also VD. So it's also equal to ID, okay? And also it's required to calculate VD, this voltage here. Okay, that's good. So let's do what we uh, were doing in normal circuits. In normal circuits, we, we write the equations uh, until we have uh, some number of equations equal to the number of unknowns, then we try to solve them together. Like for example, using uh, you know, loop, 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 loop uh, current method or uh, node, uh, node method, something like this. Here we just need Kirchhoff law. It's, it's really easy circuit, it's one loop, okay? so. Basically, the first, uh, you know, uh, equation that we're gonna write is, is KVL. So from KVL, you have here Vx, the source in that direction. The current Ix is flowing in R in that, in that direction. So the voltage across R is in that direction, Vr. And you have here Vd. So Vx from KVL, you have Vx equal to uh, Vr plus VD. But what is VR? VR is actually IX or ID. R plus VD. Okay, that's good. VX is equal to, so it's it's required to solve the circuit at three volt and one volt. I will solve it for three volt and you guys train yourself with one volt. So Vx is known equal to three volts, okay? R is also known it's equal to one kilo ohm. Henceforth, okay, in that course, uh, when the resistor is, is in kilo, okay, use it in kilo. And then the current that will be produced by the solving equations will be in milliamperes. So we will keep R in kilo ohms, and this is basically will facilitate and, you know, makes our number numbers simpler, simpler okay? Uh, and easy to, you know, visualize, understand and, and uh, understand and calculate. Okay, good. So uh, this, this equation here, Vx, which is three equal to ID, my ID, and R is just one, so just leave it plus Vd. Here is one equation in two unknowns, ID, VD, ID, and VD. So we need another equation. Good. What else we can write here? We can write the equation for VD and the ID. Remember, we have a diode. And we know, we know the equation that relates ID to VD of a diode. So basically, ID equal to IS, exponential VD over VT. And you can just ignore the one, no problem here. Okay, and you know, 99.999% of the course, this one uh, will be just, can be just ignored. And I can't remember even, you know, one simple example in which this one uh, makes sense or make some, some significant difference. So just, you know, ignore it. Okay, if we look here, VT, is 25 millivolt or 0.2 uh, or 26 millivolt or 0.026. And I in, in, in the exam or midterm or, or quiz, I will give you the exact one because with exponential relations, you know, uh, even one, uh, one, one uh, in thousand can make difference. I mean, 0.001 it can make a difference. So I will give you uh, the approximation for VT either 25 millivolt or 26 millivolt, but most of the time it will be 26 millivolt, at least in the diode part. 
okay? So basically here, and I S is known equal to 10 to the power of minus 16, but we must convert it to milliamperes because remember now, R is in kilo ohms. So I will write this now as ID equal to 10 to the power minus 13. This is IS in milliamperes. So to convert from ampere to milliampere, we multiply by 1000. Exponential VD. And I will use uh, VT uh, just in volts. So I will plug here 0 0.026. This is another equation in the same unknowns, ID and VD. So now we have two equations in two unknowns. Before I continue, feel free to pause this video and try to solve them together. Try hard to solve them together. Okay, so just let's count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's continue. I hope that you uh, try to solve it, and I know the surprise that you can't, because basically these are nonlinear equations, or at least the second equation is nonlinear equation. So you can't solve them together. We learn how to solve linear equations together. If you have a system of linear equations, you can you can solve it, okay? But uh, to solve uh, a system that had that has at least one nonlinear equation, you know, uh, it, it doesn't go in a simple in the simple way that we used to do uh, with with linear equations, okay? And here we go to what's called iterative methods or graphical methods. We go, I'm gonna do in that example, do both. I'm gonna do iterate, one, one iterative method and also uh, one uh, and the graphical method as well, okay? So let's start by the iterative method that you can just uh, use paper and then and easily do it, okay? So uh, it's better here in iterative method is to use the len function, not the exponential function. This is for mathematical reason, but let's, you know, uh, in that course, we only have that, uh, that, that equation here that, that we're gonna use, that, that we have to, to be solved uh, in non-linear using iterative methods. So in that case, use the, in, is, uh, the logarithmic function. I mean, VT as a function of I, okay? Okay, so from number two here, from two, We can write VD as 0 0.026 len ID divided by 10 to the power minus 13. Okay. Now this is let's call it to Let's call this two dash and this, let's call this two. Now we're gonna solve one and two numerically or iteratively. So solving, so number equation two is, so two dash here, is uh, nonlinear. So it cannot be solved with equation one to get VD and ID. The solution is first, solution one, use iterative method. And here what we're gonna do, okay? We're gonna assume VD, I mean, just put any number, okay? You can have any uh, initial any, any initial value. I'm showing, I will show you how, uh, when, when I start solving and showing you the iterations, you will be convinced, okay? But let's say just in English first, then we go and do it, uh, you know, and solve it 
and see how we're gonna reach the solution. So we're gonna follow this method. Number one, we're gonna assume VD, then substitute in or calculate ID from one. After we calculate ID from one, number two, using the calculated ID from step one, we calculate or recalculate, we can say, VD from two. One here is, I mean, three equal to ID plus VD. So ID is equal to three minus VD basically. And I mean by two here is uh, that VD is equal to 0 0.26, then ID divided by 10 to the power minus 13, or ID multiplied by 10 to the power uh, 13, most of 13, okay? Number three, repeat. Step one again, and step two. So after getting uh, from from no, from number two, after uh, getting VD, we recalculate again ID. Okay, then we go back to two and calculate VD. Then we go back to one and calculate ID, and so on, until we see no change or or or, or, or a change with some error in VD. some acceptable error in VD. So don't panic, it's easy, okay? So let's do it. So let's uh, minimize this a little bit. So I'm gonna create here a table. So I did here the table for you guys, okay? And that table we're gonna register or we're gonna record, you know, the steps uh, that we will do for the iterative method, okay, to solve the equations and to get the solution of the of the circuit, VD and ID, okay. So if we look back at the uh, you know the steps here, we should initialize VD. We should assume some first value for VD, okay. So we need some guess. This, by the way, this initial value should be a guess for the solution. And it might be the solution, by the way. Okay, so we need now to make a good guess. Somebody, somebody may say we can guess any number. Yes, you can guess any number. But based on your guess, your initial value, your solution may take long time or small or short time. So if we look back here at the characteristics that we started with this lecture, we said that when the silicon diodes operate or in forward condition, okay, and the conduct current, Basically, the, the voltage will be around 0.7. And for germanium, it, it would be around 0.3. So it's a good guess to assume that the initial value for VD is 0.7 because we, uh, we have you know, this uh, study or this analysis that usually the voltage will be close to that, to that, uh, to that value. So it might be 0.65, you know, 0.7 something but it will be close to 0.7. So let's start by 0.7, good. The second step is to calculate ID from that equation three minus VD. So I did it here in this online calculator. I can share, I can share the, the link with you. So when we plug here uh, the initial value of VD, three minus 0.7 will, be, will give us 2.3 milliampere. So here's the current 2.3 milliampere. Now, after calculating ID, we check if our guess is right or wrong. What we're gonna do is that, is this, I'm see, I'm, I mean this guess here. So we take our uh, ID, 
and put it again in that equation. Vd is equal to Vt lim id over is, or 0.026 lim id, which is now 2.3 uh, time, or by is, which is 10 to the power minus 13. And I did it here for you guys. Okay, so this gave us a 0.799. Just go with three decimal places. Don't go, you know, don't need uh, very huge uh, accuracy. Okay, so this is VD. Basically, you see, guys, this is 0.7, this is 0.799. So there is a difference. It's exactly uh, around 15% maybe difference. So we take this again, and this will be our, you know, first value, just like initial value. Okay, so we recalculate ID again using, using the new value for BD now. So this will give us 2.201, 2.201 for ID. Then we take this ID and plug it here again to calculate our new value for BD. It might be the same one here. That means we reach the solution. So let's see that. So we, we plug here in the equation 2.201. 201, this will give us 0 0.798, here 0.798. And you see guys now the difference is 0 0.001. So let's continue, let's continue and see what will happen if we adopt this value for uh, VD. So we just change this to eight. This will give us 2.202. We plug it again here. And see guys, now for the, uh, the third, the third place doesn't change. Okay. So here 0.798. So this is basically a very good approximate solution. Now let's assume that we, you know, we are not smart and we just choose any value for the initialization. Let's start by 0.5. One may say, okay, if we look back here, uh, maybe it's 0.5, the operating point, or 0.4, or whatever. Okay. Of course, it should be in forward bias. So don't, you know, assume it's minus because basically you are forward bias now. You know. So let's assume the initial value was 0.5. Now we we, we finished. I mean, this is the current, 2.202, and this is the voltage, 0.789. That's it. We solve it the we solve it the problem, and we can do the same when when v when v x is equal to one volt because this uh, it's required to solve the the, the circuit twice one at v x equal to three and one at v x equal to one. Okay, let's do the same, but assuming another initial value, point five for example. Okay, that's fine. So we follow the same steps. Calculate I D. It will give us two point five. Then we take this and calculate Vx. It gives us 0 0.802, 0 0.802. Good, so this is basically different, of course, very different from our, our first guess. That's why this is, you know, a bad initialization, we can say, or worse than 0 0.07, or 0 0.07 is uh, much better than 0 0.5, okay? Okay, now, Let's calculate uh, the new ID. So this is the current, uh, this is the voltage 0 0.0, uh, 0 0.802. This will give us a current of 2.198. We take this and plug it here and calculate the new value. And it gave us 0 0.78, 0 0.798. 0.798, which is very good. It's a book. It is like this one. So for, yes, the first step was bad. We were uh, far from the solution, but for just from one iteration, just one iteration further, you reach good uh, to the solution because the solution was, was 0.798. Now we take this, And this will be our new approximation for VD, 0 0.798, uh, 0 0.798, 0 
this will give us 2.202, then here 202, this will give us again 0.798. Okay, guys, so this is basically, you know, the iterative method. Now let's check the, so the solution basically is that VD is equal to 0.798 volt. And the ID is 2.202 milliamperes. Another solution that we can do is to do the graphical solution. So this is basically the graphical solution. So let's analyze this a little bit. So let's uh, share the other screen. So let's do the graphical solution now, okay? We know that ID equal to uh, Vx minus Vd. And Vd equal to Vt lim Id over Is. So let's substitute this in this, two in one. So Id equal to Vx minus Vt lim Id over Is. One may say, where is the resistance here? The resistance is one kilo, so it's one, because ID is in milliampere now. Good. So just look at this equation here. You have two sides. This one is a function of ID, which is constant function, just equal to ID. And this is also a function, let's call this F1, let's call this F2, which is also a function of ID. But remember, these two functions are equal. These two functions are equal, okay? So what we're gonna do is that we will draw or plot both of them versus ID. So this is the, the vertical axis here is F1 of ID and also F2 of ID. And the horizontal axis here is just ID. If we draw F, one of ID, it will be just, you know, uh, just uh, a line like this, a straight line. Okay, so this is basically if one of ID equal to ID with a slope of 45 degrees. And if we draw this relation here, it will be something like this. Okay, but it's not that clear here because of, you know, the scale is very big for the linear relation. That's why it's not so clear, but you, you see guys, there is a curving here, curvature here, okay? But you know that F1, so this is F2 of ID. But we know that F1 should be equal to F2. And if you look here, they are interconnected or intersected in one point. So at that point of intersection, both have the same value. So at that point here, both F1 of ID and F2 of ID is approximately equal to 2.2. And that's basically the solution. At that point here, which is 2.2, around 2.2, you know, both equations are equal. That's why this is the solution, because this is the only value for ID that makes I F1 of ID equal to F2 of ID. Both functions are, are, are equal. Then we take this back. So VD will be equal to VT lim 2.2 over IS. And VT is known and IS is known. If we do that, you will get, you know, uh, around 0.78, just like this one. Okay. So basically here's the iterative method is not because to draw this, this is a hassle. You need programming and stuff, but here we didn't need any programming, just a calculator. Okay. Okay, guys. 
So this is basically how you you use you know uh, the information that you know so far to uh, get or solve a circuit that has a diode in forward bias. Okay, you need to solve nonlinear equations together. Okay, which can be solved using iterative solution or using the graphical method. Of course, in an, it's in, a, in an exam or a quiz or midterm or something, I will ask for the iterative solution. If I if I am gonna ask about this, of course, I may not. I may not. But if I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask about the iterative solution because it's doable. You can do it, you know, using just the calculator. Okay. But I just showed you uh, the both concepts to understand more how things is going here. Okay, guys. So this is uh, just one example on the forward device operation. And in the next uh, videos, we're gonna explore the operation of, uh, of the diode in the reverse bias and also breakdown conditions. So see you in the next video, bye-bye.